I saw quite a little bit of swing going on with that gospel acclamation. That was good. That, was, that bluesy thing kind of fits in uh, for us today. Um, before I talk about the manger up here and a few other things, I just want to share this with you. And you don't have to raise your hands, but I just want to know how many of you are really stressed out right now? I even saw some hands go up just immediately. It's just a knee-jerk reaction. Um, I remember a devotion that Billy Graham had some years ago, close to Christmas. And his question was, or I guess his point was, that he every year got all kinds of letters from people, particularly around the holidays. And he said that he got so many letters at Christmas time every single year from people saying that they were just absolutely stressed out. I mean, they were losing track of all kinds of the meaning of Christmas. And they were stressed out, he said, primarily because of gift buying and preparing homes for people and guests and all those things and all kinds of money being spent. And they were looking to him for some advice. And so he said that a lot of times he wrote back and would say, now think about the end of the Christmas story and those three wise men that came to see Jesus in Bethlehem. He said, do you think they were stressed out going to meet the baby Jesus? I mean, they traveled hundreds and hundreds of miles to get there. It had to have been just an arduous, difficult journey. They put out all kinds of their own treasure to bring treasures to Jesus, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But he said, do you know what the rest of the story says? He said, when they got close to Bethlehem, the the story indicates that they were filled with exceeding joy. They weren't stressed out. They were coming to meet the Savior of the world, the Messiah, the promised Messiah. And they were filled not with stress or pressure or running around like chickens with their heads cut off, but they were filled with exceeding joy. Because, he said, they were focused on the one right thing. They were solely focused on Jesus. And that's what I want for you. That's what I want for you in these next two days. We're really close to Christmas Eve. And to all kinds of wonderful things happening. And I want you to not be stressed out. I want you to be filled with exceeding joy. Because the Messiah comes into our midst. Now, here's the reason for the manger. It's part of a series that I've had in my mind these last few weeks. You remember if you were here three weeks ago that I brought an anvil? Luckily, I called Marv Green, and Marv came through with a hundred, not just an anvil, but a hundred-year-old anvil. It was, it's been in his family or Karen's family for a hundred or more years, and it was on this big, huge you know, old stump it was kind of uh, mounted to this stump, and he gave me a hammer or a mallet, and I kind of banged on that anvil, and I asked if that was a good sound. It was that cold, hard sound of iron in this season of bells, you know, and joy. And people kind of shook their heads no, and I said, really? Because this is the sound of something real regular, a weapon of war being pounded out into a plowshare, which is a farm implement. It helps feed people. It was a good sound that when the Messiah comes, one of the signs of the Messiah is that he brings about a peace that he calls for and that he helps make and that he brings about in us. And when we beat weapons, you know, anger and violence and things like that into peaceful tools, and in this case, farm machinery, farm implements that help grow food and feed the world. And when people are fed, they're much more at peace. Then we see the Messiah in our midst, alive. Then, the following week, I went back to my wood pile in my backyard, and I dug out a big stump that I'd cut a year or two ago. It was just waiting to kind of dry and be split maybe next summer. And I brought that stump, and I set it right here in the front of the church, And I kind of drilled a hole in it with my drill because I needed to put a green shoot that I had gotten into that stump because the promise from the prophet that weekend was that a shoot will come forth out of the stump of Jesse. An old dead stump will produce something brand new that's alive. And it symbolized who Jesus is 
as the Messiah who brings salvation to the world, who brings salvation to you, and says, in me, when I'm in the world, when the world is filled with God, God's world experiences resurrection out of death. New life out of something totally dead. Have you ever had some weeds growing through the blacktop in your driveway? Of course you have. And it makes you mad because it splits it, you know, and then you have to do stuff to it. But new life always comes out of old, dead, hard things. And the symbol of the Messiah is that that's the Messiah's work in the world. So today, I have this little manger. Now this is uh, an almost too nice looking manger. Because what's a manger? It's a feed trough in the barn, right? We all learned that. And so Jesus was born in a manger in the feed trough where you put hay and silage and whatever, all kinds of stuff for the cows and the donkeys to eat. And it is absolutely as ordinary of a thing as possible. The symbol of the Messiah, one of the symbols of the Messiah coming into the world, one of the signs is that Ordinary things in life and in the world get infused with God. And Jesus is alive, infusing his life, holy life, into ordinary things. Today's gospel was about Joseph. It's about Jesus. But it's about Joseph. Matthew's Christmas story focuses more on Joseph than on Mary, interestingly. On Tuesday night, When we come to church here or wherever you go, you will hear a grand, beautiful story of Mary. And there will be angels singing in the heavens and stars bright, so bright that it draws shepherds even to Bethlehem and others. And it's a glorious story. And we even sang that song, the opening song today about Mary and the glory of that. But today is about an ordinary, a very ordinary person named Joseph who is just as ordinary, by the way, as you and me. He's a regular, ordinary guy who married a regular, ordinary young woman, teenager, Mary, who came from a very regular, ordinary backwater town, Bethlehem, who were just ordinary in every other way, and God came to them and used them and infused them with himself. And he came to the place where he could be called Emmanuel, God with us. And he said to his people, you need to know what my name is. My name is Emmanuel, God with us. With us. With us. Not a distant place, but right here, God with us. And he showed people that he, as the Messiah, came into the most ordinary of places, a manger, a barn in a little backwater town that nobody even knew about, to an ordinary guy and an ordinary woman, and showed the world what the love of God was all about. And he shows you now in this time and place, and me, what the love of God is all about. If God could come and put on flesh and convince people that he is with them as the Messiah in the most ordinary, unlikely place like Bethlehem. Could he also come and put on flesh and convince you in the most ordinary, unlikely places in your life that he is with you? To redeem you? To love you? To forgive you? to lift you up, to give you new life, to plant peace in you? Could God come into the most ordinary, unlikely places and fill the world with himself? Are you afraid right now of anything? Just ordinary things? God is with you. Are you overjoyed about anything right now? Ordinary joy, great joy, but ordinary joy in this life? God is with you. Are you lonely? God is with you. 
Do you need help? God is with you. God is filling this world with that presence of the Messiah. And everything becomes holy because of it. There's nothing that's just ordinary without holiness in it anymore when God is in the world. I want you to come to Christmas on Tuesday and Wednesday with that in your mind. I don't want you to be stressed out. It's too little. It's just little. This is big. This is the God of the universe coming into the world. And I want you to take that with you in everything you do. He comes into your feelings. He comes into your emotions. He comes into your joy. He comes into your sadness. He comes into your decisions, your actions, your path. And God fills it with his holiness, the holiness of the Messiah. You might be sitting around the tree on Tuesday night watching kids tear open presents. God is in that. You might be just sitting by yourself, listening, waiting for God, anticipating him. God is in that. You might be with your family. God is in that. That's what I want for you this Christmas. That is exceeding joy. And it is the sign that the Messiah has come. Amen. Amen.